He is a loving Father, and His love it never ends, it never ceases. He loves you with an everlasting love. The psalmist says, You are gods, you are sons of the Most High God. That is who you are. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God.
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer. Hello and welcome to our Sunday service. I'm glad to be here with you this morning to bring God's word. I believe everyone is doing well and prospering and moving forward in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, when you have a vision from God and when you have a word from God, it doesn't matter what goes on around you you will still be moving forward. Um, last week I spoke about the power and the importance of having a godly vision, a vision that comes from the hearts of the Father, a vision that is birthed out of revelation. And every one of you who hold on to that word and have a vision this season, you will grow from glory to glory. You cannot fail you cannot be moved and be pushed by whatever is going on in the world. A word of caution, don't be carried by all the media and the theories, uh, you know, conspiracy theories and all those things floating around in the internet. It's easy to be filled with fear if we are not careful. This season is a season for us to be in the Word of God, rooted and founded in the Word of God. The church is not called to look at what's going on outside. We are called to grow in the knowledge of Him who has called us, in the Word of God, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The more we grow in the revelation knowledge of Jesus, the more life begins to fall in place. The more we begin to understand who we are in Christ Jesus, the more things will begin to work on your behalf. 
it will all just function in your favor. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to strive. You don't have to sweat and hustle like the rest of the world. You just got to get into the Word of God and allow the Word of God to take you to the place that God has for you. Amen. And I believe the last week message blessed you. And I have a word for you today to let you know who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1, verse 16 onwards. Ephesians, chapter number 1, verse 16 onwards. Uh, let me read from verse 15. Paul is writing to the Ephesian church and he says here, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you. So Paul is thankful for the good news he has heard about the Ephesian church. And he's saying, making mention of you in my prayers. So it must have been very good news that Paul is receiving. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And I'll just pause right there and I will go back to verse 17. And Paul is saying that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He's saying here that God needs to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in the knowledge of Jesus. And he's saying, I'm going to pray that your eyes of your understanding are enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. See, you got to realize, Paul is saying, you got to realize the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? Many Christians today are living as if they don't know what their inheritance is. They're living as if they don't understand what the hope of their calling is. They have absolutely no idea what Jesus has done for them. And they have absolutely no idea who God has called them to be. So we are producing weak Christians who are saved and born again without understanding their identity, their purpose and their calling and simply warming pews and sleeping without realizing the potentials that they carry. So Paul is saying, look, I don't want you to be ignorant of these facts. I'm asking God to give you a spirit of revelation, spirit of wisdom in the knowledge of Jesus, because everything that we need in life is tied to the knowledge of Jesus. If you want to know your potentials, if you want to know who you are in this life, if you want to know who God has called you to be, it is tied to the knowledge of Jesus. If you're looking for healing, it is tied to the knowledge of Jesus. If you know from the word of God and believe that Jesus has healed you and Jesus has given you divine health, that's where you get your healing from. That's where you get your protection from. Now, I understand and I agree with the importance of doctors and medicines in this world. But doctors are not the first thing that I look for. Medicine is not the first place, number one place that I look to. Because I know where my help comes from. I know where my, 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 my nourishment comes from. Life doesn't come from food. Life doesn't come from, from the hospitals and the medicines that we take. Life comes from his word. The Bible says that, 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 that man shall not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let us be a generation who know the word of God. Let us be a generation who understand and have uh, uh, the spirit of revelation and wisdom. We have to be, we have to overcome the spirit of ignorance that is, that is, that is all over the church. And that is why we find people who are not living up to what God has created them to be. They're not doing what God has called them to be. So they find an easy way out and they just hope that one day they're going to die and go to heaven. This whole concept of dying and go to heaven. I don't believe that man was created to go to heaven. I believe that man was created to inherit earth. I believe that God, my God created man to rule and to dominate and to, and to live on this earth. So we have all these wrong teachings about how man was created for heaven. Let me ask you a question. 
We've heard this saying that Jesus is the way to heaven. What if I told you that Jesus is not the way to heaven? Where in the Bible does it say that Jesus is the way to heaven? The Bible only says that Jesus said that he was the way to the Father. In my Father's house there are many mansions. What is he talking about? Jesus is talking about the mutual indwelling. I will go to my father and I have my father in me and me in my father and you and we will come and live in you. What is he talking about? He's talking about a believer when he believes in Jesus. Uh, he's born again and when he's born again, the spirit of God comes to live inside of this born again believer and the father and him comes to live in us and we are in him. So it is a mutual indwelling of sorts where we are in the father and the father is in us through Jesus. Because we are not promised heaven we are promised the father we are promised intimacy and a mutual indwelling with the father and that is the way that Jesus made for us we were separated from the father because of sin and because we were separated from the father we lost our way we lost our identity we lost what we were created for and Jesus came into this world to take back the lost children and reconcile them back to the Father. The reconciliation work of Jesus began the moment he was born. And the same God of Adam, whom Adam rejected, Jesus began to follow, accept, and reconcile humanity back to the Father by doing the will of the Father. At every moment in time, we see Jesus accepting the Father, listening to the Father, submitting to the Father, rather than a God of Adam, whom Adam and his children were afraid of. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says, that God was through Jesus reconciling the world to himself. So Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus is the way back to the relationship and the intimacy with the Father. And that is why it is important for us to grow in the knowledge of what Jesus has done for you. And that begins with salvation. That begins with you understanding that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Life, what is eternal life? Eternal life is knowing the Father. And how do you know the Father? Through Jesus. The moment you come to know Jesus, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. That is why when we grow in the knowledge and the revelation of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us, we begin to realize our own identity. What has been finished for us on the cross. Amen. That is why it is important for you to know the finished work of Jesus on the cross. If you want to know more about the finished work of Jesus, I, I believe there is, a, there is a Bible study in our podcast and our YouTube channel. Go and look for the finished work of Jesus. Where I teach about, um, you know, I, I wish to teach more on that subject, but there is a teaching. You can go and listen to it and understand what are the finished work of Jesus and how you can walk in those realities and those truths. Amen. So Paul here, he wants the Ephesian church to know and for them to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of your calling what are the of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints do you know your inheritance do you know what are the things that are yours through christ jesus what are you what are rightfully yours in christ jesus you got to know your inheritance what is rightfully yours people who don't know what they what they carry and what their inheritance is they walk in ignorance and the enemy just tramples over them Instead of them trampling over snakes and scorpions. And that's why people are so enemy conscious and not God conscious. I'm only conscious about who God has called me to be. I don't fight the devil. My spiritual warfare is not fighting devils. Jesus has finished it for me. My spiritual warfare is standing on the word of God. The finished work of Jesus on affirming my salvation of what Jesus has already done for me, finished for me. That is why if you walk in ignorance, if you walk in the lack of knowledge, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. My heart bleeds and uh, when I see Christians living under the bondage of the enemy, simply because they don't understand who they are. 
but may your eyes be opened this morning. May your spiritual eyes and of wisdom and revelation be open in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 19, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? So there is an exceeding great power that is working towards you who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So there is a power that works in you and this same power, the Bible says in verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the, his right hand in heavenly places. Hallelujah. There is a power that is working in you. And God is saying that this same power raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. That same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. It is unlimited. It is immeasurable. This power is in you. Paul wants your eyes to be flooded with the light of the word of God for you to understand and see that that same power that worked to raise Jesus from the dead, that made him sit in heavenly places and put everything under his feet. That same power that gave Jesus the dominion and authority, that same power that raised Jesus and he was risen from the dead and he seated at the right hand of the Father. That same power is at work in your life. And you still behave as if uh, you don't have any power. The problem is not that you don't have power or you lack under you, the power. You just lack understanding. But may the eyes of your revelation, the eyes of your understanding be open. That God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Do you know the power of God that is at work in you? Do you understand the dunamis that is in you? If you want to understand dunamis, there is another message on dunamis that you can listen to. For you to understand that dunamis, that, that power that is at work in you, that same power is given to you by the virtue of your nature. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it's that same power that, that, that raised Jesus from the dead allowed Jesus to, to disarm principalities and powers. Every demon, every satanic power was destroyed by that power. And he put them as a public spectacle and he put them under his feet. If it is under the feet of Jesus, it is under the, your feet. If Satan is under the feet of Jesus, he is under the feet of the church. But the church is behaving as if they don't have any power. The church is behaving as if they don't have any authority they're allowing satan to run rampant ah because why because my people perish for lack of understanding and knowledge and revelation but i pray and i prophesy the time is coming the sons of god are beginning to manifest all over the world where they will begin to pick up the word of god and say this is not true this is not agreeable this is not something that we'll accept because we are born of god we are born of the spirit of god we are sons of god that same power that raised christ jesus from the dead is in me that same power that caused jesus to make every demonic power a public spectacle and destroy and crush the head of Satan that same power is in me if Christ is in me the hope of glory I can do things that Christ does because he is in me I am in him and through this mutual indwelling I can co labor with God and I can bring peace on earth I'm called to bring heaven on earth I'm called to bring the kingdom of God on earth hallelujah Jesus said that's why you need to pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we ain't called to go to heaven we are called to bring heaven on earth we are not called to run to heaven 
by some 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 means of rapture we are made we are meant to be warriors for Christ to be to be to be victorious to be called to be to be overcomers on earth hallelujah the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth everywhere you look at the Bible you find evidence of God wanting man to inherit the earth he wants you to be an overcomer because God is bent on collaborating with man. Whatever he does, he wants you to do along with him. If he has defeated death, if he has defeated Satan, God wants you to defeat Satan and overcome death and come to the fullness. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to be half-half. He wants you to be exactly like Jesus. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. Which he worked, that power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above, watch this, watch this, verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. Verse 23, 22. And he puts all things under his feet oh he put god put all things under the feet of jesus and gave him to be head over all things to the church to the church are you the church are you the body of christ if things are under the feet of jesus it is under your feet Say to two, three people, say to your neighbor, say to yourself, uh, if it is under the feet of Jesus, it is under my feet, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hallelujah. You are a son of God. You are born of God and born of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's read from verses 6 onwards. Ephesians chapter 2. Hey, Braze Koraba. Let's read from verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together. Oh, come on. Say this, say this with me. God raised me up together. With who? With Jesus and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus? Far above principalities, far above every powers. That means uh, you have every authority over the most powerful demon on earth. There is no angel that will not obey you. You have power over every angelic being. The angels are your, are your servants. You can tell them what to do. You can command angels. You can speak to them. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I can call a legion of angels and they will come and help me. And Jesus spoke that as a son of God. And now you are all also begotten of the word of God. The Bible clearly tells us that you, if you are a believer, the same way God begot Jesus is the same way you were begotten. Jesus, before his resurrection, was the only begotten Son of God. After his resurrection, he became the firstborn of all creation. Hallelujah. Now, those who believe in Jesus, hallelujah, those who believe in Jesus, he says, uh, I have the power to also call them sons of God. John chapter 1. He gives them, he gives us the authority to become sons of God. Hallelujah. So we too become sons of God. Jesus, our elder brother. And we are seated with him in heavenly places. We are saved by him, by his name. Hallelujah. By what he did. He reconciled us back to the Father. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Every power and every demonic being is under the feet of Jesus. We are seated with him. So we, they are also seated under, uh, they, they are under our feet. Hallelujah. Every demonic power is under our feet. Because we are the body of Christ. That includes the feet, right? So every demonic power is under our feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, 
he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith hallelujah it is by the grace of God is through faith in Jesus that we have received all these things amen say this with me if everything is under the feet of Jesus that means everything is underneath my feet amen let's move on Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 onwards hallelujah Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 for this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man everybody say I am strengthened in my inner man hallelujah Paul is saying according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might hey I speak that you are strengthened with might through the Spirit of God in your inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God not some of the some of the portions of God but you may know that you are filled with all the fullness of God hallelujah you are not filled with some bit of God you are not filled with some portion of God you are filled with the fullness of God hallelujah verse 20 now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly about all that we ask or think according to the power again the power the dunamis that works in us to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Hallelujah. He's saying here uh, that you may understand uh, that you are filled with the fullness of God. You are not filled with half of God or quarter of God. It doesn't matter whether you're praying today or you prayed yesterday. If you believed in Jesus, uh, you are filled with the fullness of God. He just wants you to know that truth. Uh, though just because you pray in tongues or you don't pray in tongues, uh, that doesn't matter. The first thing that I want you to know and understand that you have to believe and have come to the faith and understanding that you are filled with the fullness of God hallelujah until and unless you understand that you are filled with the fullness of God you're going to be, you know, here you know, you're going to be like, oh God, oh, you're going to be trying striving, but by faith you got to understand that you are filled with the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Knowing this, be strengthened with might. The power and the might of the Holy Spirit in your inner man. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 8. And to love him, we see that Christ gave these apostles and prophets for the equipping of the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry. And what is the purpose of the church and the ministries? The evangelists and the pastors and the teachers and the prophets and the apostles. It's easier for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Again, he says, so that we all come to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. That we all come to the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. It means that you and I, it is possible to walk exactly like Jesus. The way you have to have faith is like this. He doesn't say to the stature of the half of Christ or to the stature of the quarter of Christ. 
It says that the, that the body of Christ exists, the ministries exist. The fivefold ministries exist in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 11 and 12. To equip the church. So which means I exist as a pastor, an apostle, as a prophet. I exist to equip you, the body of Christ, along with me. To come to the full measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So I will be lying to you if I told you that you cannot be like Christ. Scripture says that you can be exactly like Christ. But Paul says, I, I'm not saying that I've already attained it. I'm not already uh, lambanoed it. But I'm looking towards it. But I want to catch a lambano it. I want to hold on to it. I want to catch it. So a lot of people say, that it is impossible to be exactly like Christ. But how would you know if you don't grow in the knowledge of him and try to hold on and move towards your destination? If you say that your destination is anywhere, anyhow, you'll end up nowhere. But if you have a focus and if you say, fixing my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, he who called me is faithful and what he says is true. And you keep moving towards that goal of being perfected, of coming into the full stature of the measure of the fullness of Christ. You have a goal. The body has the destination and we are moving towards something. But if we say, I'm just going to try I'm just going to fail. I'm just a failure. I'm just going to trip and fall and somehow get into heaven. That's not what Christ called you for. That's being weak. That's being, that's, that's losing out. But God has called you to rule and reign with him in heavenly places. Why would God call you to rule and reign? And then only for you to die and go to heaven. God wants you to inherit earth. God wants you to live in success. God wants you to understand that with Him, you can do all things. Hallelujah. He wants you to understand that when you come to the knowledge of Him, the full measure, and you come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, and He says, do not be like children, tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine. Stop listening to people who tell you you cannot be like Christ. Don't listen to preachers who don't talk from the point of reference of the cross. The finished work of Jesus on the cross. I want to challenge you. That every message that you listen to. Every word that you read in the Bible. Read it from the perspective of a victor. From the perspective of the finished work of Jesus. That he has already finished the work. He's reigning and ruling. And you are seated with him. And you are called to rule and reign with him. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 1 John. 1 John, chapter number 3. 1 John, chapter number 3. Amen. Verse 1 onwards. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Behold, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. Look at this. Be, you know, therefore it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and everyone who has hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Ha ha ha. I love this. Beloved, now we are the children of God. Are you a child of God? And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, when Christ is revealed, we shall be like him. The church has not reached that, the, the unity of the faith yet. We've not yet come to the completion. 
and the perfection to the full measure and the stature of Christ. We need to talk, walk, and look like Jesus. Amen. We need to behave like Jesus. Our goal and our destination is Jesus. Amen. Jesus finished the work. God has done his part of the deal. Now it's up to us to choose who and how we're going to behave. Are we going to cower and be like cowards and, and be weak and walk like as if we don't have victory? Or are we going to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith and say, Thank you, Lord, for finishing the work. I do not yet know what it is, but you have been revealed to us. I'm growing in the knowledge of you. The more and more I know the word and the more and more I know Jesus, I realize I'm called to be walking in total victory and dominion. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Hebrews Tanaba. Romans chapter 8. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. What is creation waiting for? It's waiting for the church to wake up from its slumber and sleep and realize that we are the sons of God. The Bible says that we will realize at one time that we are exactly like Jesus. So Jesus was a son of God and he manifested. And Jesus was the only human being who ever fully 100% manifested what God had in mind when he created Adam. Because Adam didn't fully manifest as a son. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, came and manifested and showed us what it meant to be a son of God. Hallelujah. And now those who believe in the son, the son, are also now called sons of God. Because he is the firstborn of all new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But he was the first creation, the firstborn. Hallelujah. And when you put your faith in the firstborn, you're also now a new creation. When he died, you died with him. When he was buried, you were buried with him. On the cross, justice was served on you. You died with him. But when you are resurrected, you're justified as if you have no sin. Hallelujah. Sin was nailed on the cross. The old man was nailed on the cross. He died and he was buried. But the new man that resurrected with Christ, that same power worked in you as well to lift you up and make you sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's what we saw in Ephesians chapter 1. That same power that worked in you. If it worked in Jesus, it works in me. If it raised Jesus to be at the right hand of the Father, I too was raised with Jesus 2,000 years ago and seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The moment I put my faith in Him, that truth becomes my reality. Because in the kingdom of God, truth is accessed through, by faith. So when you put your faith in Jesus, you were taken to the heavenly places and you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. The one who fills all, the church, the body of Christ. You are the body. You're not separate from Jesus. You are one with Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So the owner's expectation of the creation oh, eagerly waits the revealing of the sons of God. What is the next step now? God is waiting for sons to start manifesting, to start revealing themselves. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him subjected it in hope. Because creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. The moment children start realizing who they are and they begin to manifest the sons of God and the more and more sons are manifested, the more and more creation begins to be restored. Amen. Don't, don't, don't worry about all the politics and all the problems that are going on in the world. Focus on beginning to manifest the sons of God. Because if you don't manifest the sons of God, things ain't going to change in the world. You're not going to achieve anything by your own strength. You've got to rely on the power that worketh in you. That same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead and made him sit in heavenly places. Ha! Ah, You've got to learn how to walk in that power. You've got to spend time in the word of God and understand who you are in Christ Jesus. 
The more and more you become conscious of it, the more and more you begin to manifest as sons of God. Hallelujah. The more and more you believe and walk in true humility. What is true humility? True humility is this. When I say what I am sharing from the word of God or what God says to you from the word of God, you believe it without doubt. If Jesus did it, you can do it. That's faith and that's humility. Humility is accepting God's word as true. Humility is accepting and having a teachable spirit and saying, God, if you can, if you call me to do this, if this power is in me, I too can walk as a son of God. Hallelujah. Who is ready to manifest? Amen. There is a groaning in each and every one of you. That is not satisfied. It cries out for more. The same way creation groans for something. We who also have the first fruits of the spirit. We also groan within ourselves. And I personally want to see it. I want to witness it. I want to see the redemption. And I want to see the redemption of all of crea creation. I want to see sons of God manifest to the fullest. So what is stopping you from manifesting? Is it your mind? your soul or is it your body because your spirit is completely transformed and it is fully saved but our mind and our soul is in the process of being saved because the more the mind is subject to the word of God the more the mind is transformed and the more the mind gets saved but the body needs to overcome death and decay as well hallelujah the body needs to overcome physical pain and death as well hallelujah your spirit is totally saved your soul is in the process of being saved as you are renewed by the word of god amen and the more your mind is renewed the more your soul is saved the more you have peace with god your more the, the more your soul is saved you need to get rid of all those negative way of thinking all the negative news on the social media and get deep into the word of God because trying to read up on the conspiracy theories is not going to renew your mind and it's not going to be beneficial for your soul amen so let the Zoe life of God from your spirit affect your soul by the reading of the word and and, 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 and by, by, by the spirit of God understanding who you are through humility believing the word of God and let it eventually change your body too. I believe a generation will come where they will say, watch sickness. Today the church is fighting between sickness and health, healing and death. But I say, and I prophesy to you, that you will never fall sick in the name of Jesus. You cannot fall sick in the name of Jesus. You cannot die in the name of Jesus. No coronavirus can ever touch you. I prophesy, everybody, everybody, part of Life Road Church, who are partnering with us, who are communicating with us, may you never die in the name of Jesus. Refuse to die. Refuse to fall sick. Walk in the realm of glory. Understanding that Christ in you, the hope of glory. But you may have the question, but Pastor, why do Christians still die? I don't know the complete answer to everything. But I know one thing, I do not yet see it, but I hold on and I want to hold on. I might not be there yet, but I'm holding on and I'm believing. I'm not going to let the next generation go without hearing the truths that I have to say to them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep quiet and say that somebody else is going to come speak the truth. I'm going to speak the truth because I have a responsibility not to please man, but to please God. So I believe that a generation is going to come that will refuse to die. That will say that we have overcome and defeated death. Hallelujah. That you're not just saved in your spirit, but you're saved in your soul. You're completely transformed by the renewal of your mind through the word of God. Hallelujah. And finally, you're also saved completely in your body. Where you begin to manifest in fullness of glory. Where you become exactly like Jesus, glorified, hallelujah. The full effect of glorification begins to happen. And you begin to say, I have overcome death. Church, 
Are you ready for this challenge? Are you ready to believe in what I'm talking about right now? Are you ready to understand that you are called to reign and rule as kings? Hallelujah. We are called to be victorious. You are sons of God. It is time for you to start manifesting as sons of God. Amen. When Jesus was in the wilderness led by the Spirit of God, the Bible says that he was amongst wild beasts. The wild beasts came to Jesus. God had given Adam dominion over everything. But when Adam fell, everything, the whole earth, went into subjection of decay and death. But when Christ Jesus came, he came as the way, the truth, and the life. And I believe that creation understood that life had come. I believe creation understood that redemption had come, not only for human beings, but also for entire creation. Hallelujah. Because Jesus was the only one who was qualified, qualified to die for the sins of man and to reconcile man back to God. But what next after reconciliation? After reconciliation back with God, are we just supposed to spend the next couple of years on earth and just die and go to heaven? Like I said, you were not created to go to heaven. We are the city. We are at Mount Zion. We are the new Jerusalem. We are the city of the most high God. We are where the innumerable company of angels are. Hallelujah. My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I was called and created to, to, to carry the fullness of God. There is no temple, physical temple on earth or in heaven that can carry the fullness of the glory of God except the human body that is uh, that, 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 that has, who has given his life to Jesus. Amen. Any human being who has given his life to Jesus, his body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy of Holies is in you. Amen. The river of God flows from you. That's what Jesus said when he came to the woman at the well. I can give you a drink and if you drink of these rivers of living waters will flow from you. And in the book of Revelation we see that the city Jerusalem began to come down from heaven. And when, when, when John saw the city come down from heaven, he saw the city dressed as a bride, a beautiful city. With a lamb that was seated on the throne in the city. And a great river began to flow from that city. And he said that this city was dressed as a bride. It is not talking about a futuristic city that's going to come and land on earth. It is talking about the church. It is talking about the glorious church. It is you and I. The book of Revelation, the, the new Jerusalem is you and I. We, the ecclesia. The city of the living God. Hallelujah. The innumerable company of angels. Where a believer is, there an innumerable company of angels are. What are you worried about? Why are you thinking about a future that looks so bleak and weak? I'm calling you to believe in a future that is optimistic and full of promises and hope that God has already hey, accomplished. And they are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Do you want to believe in a future? Where the world is going to end? Or do you want to believe in a future where God restores everything through you? Jesus has finished the work. God has finished the work. Now he's waiting for you to manifest. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 19. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The more and more you grow in the knowledge of Christ. The more and more you begin to reveal as sons of God. You begin to do what Jesus did. Jesus said, it is profitable if I leave. Why was it profitable for him to leave? Because when he leaves and he sits at the right hand of God, that same power that made him sit at the right hand also made you sit with him in heavenly places. That's why it was profitable. It was profitable because that same power that made him the head and put every power, demonic power under his feet also put every demonic power under your feet. That's why it was profitable. Why was it profitable? Because every name that is that, that, on this earth and in heaven everywhere was subject to him. And that is why when you say in the name of Jesus, every other name must obey. Hallelujah. There is no political party about the name of Jesus. There is no demon about the name of Jesus. There is no sickness about the name of Jesus. There is no problem about the name of Jesus. There is no debt which is about the name of Jesus. When you stand and walk in the knowledge of him and you begin to function, 
they begin to realize that demonic powers and every power on earth begin to realize that sons of God are manifesting. The problem why the devil is taking you for a, for a ride is because you don't realize that you're a son of God. But when you realize you're a son of God, the demons, when, when Jesus crossed over to the other side, the demons recognize Jesus and say, you are the son. <laughs> why have you come here to torment us before our time? Sons of God torment demons. When the sons of Sceva, they were not sons of God. They were not manifesting as sons of God. In the book of Acts, we see that they tried to cast out demons. They said, they said, we cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Why did they have to say that Paul preaches? Because they didn't have an intimate knowledge of Jesus. The Bible says, the demons spoke out and said, Paul I know, Jesus I know. Putting Paul in the same league as Jesus. <laughs> Paul I know, Jesus I know, who are you? Do you know why Paul was in the same league as Jesus? Because Jesus, because Paul believed everything the word of God said about him. Amen. He, he, he knew and he knew the power that was working in him. It was the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that raised him and put him at the heavenly places and at the right hand of the father was the same power that was working in Paul also. So he was, used, he was able to use the name of Jesus with audacity of faith. But the sons of Sceva could not use that, in the name of Jesus with an audacity of faith. They could not use the name of Jesus because they were, not, they were not saved. They were not sons of God. They had to say in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. I don't want you to believe in a God that your mom believed. I don't want you to believe in a God that I'm talking about. I want you to believe in a God that you personally have a relationship with. And you personally know through the word of God. Hallelujah. I can inspire you and I can take you to the well and I can make you drink but it is up to you to make a decision today and say God I want to know you for myself that's why we see Zacchaeus in the Bible running to the sycamore tree climbs up the tree and waits for an encounter with Jesus are you willing to get into the word of God and understand who you are as a child of God get into the word of God and say God I want to know you for myself I, 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 I'm sick and tired of all these things running over my life, ruining my life. I want to get into the word of God. The intimacy with Jesus. Forget about your problems. Forget about the issues. There is a power that is at work in you. There is a power that is greater than every power in this world. That is at work in you. That is that same power that raised Jesus from the dead and made you sit with him in heavenly places. As he is. So are we in this world. There is no difference between you and Jesus. In your spirit, you're exactly like Jesus. The only difference is Jesus defeated death 100%. Amen. He, in his mind, you don't, Jesus doesn't struggle with, uh, with insecurity and, uh, and, and, and loneliness and, 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 and uh, depression. We need to come, in, uh, our soul needs to come into full peace with God. We need to walk in total authority in every area and take dominion over our mental realm, in our physical realm, in every area of our life. When you go to your job, you take dominion over your work. Be excellent in everything that you do. Hallelujah. And may the God of peace, that's, that's, that uh, as surprises all understanding, give you peace and joy and all understanding that you may walk in what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. May the Spirit of God fill you with peace. May the Spirit of God fill you with joy. May the Spirit of God fill you with the spirit of revelation and wisdom. And may your eyes of your understanding be open today to know the riches of your calling, the hope of who God has called you to be, and the power that worked in him to raise him up. May that same power, may you become conscious of it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe you're blessed today. Take this word. Believe it with all your hearts. Walk in humility. And begin to manifest as sons of God. Hallelujah. If you'd like to know more about sonship. And who you are as a son of God. Go and listen to our podcast. On Spotify or on uh, Apple Podcasts. The sonship series. I highly recommend you to listen to the sonship series. And you'll be blessed. It is the knowledge of the word of God. That sets you free. Amen. Jesus said you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. If you don't know who you are. You're going to behave like a slave and an orphan. But if you know you are a son, you'll behave like a son. Amen. God bless you. Much love to everyone who are listening today. Let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. The entrance of your word has brought light into your children's heart. Flood them with the light of your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word brings light. May they be flooded with God's light and love and may they grow from glory to glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you and I will see you very soon and have a wonderful, blessed weekend in Jesus' name. God bless you.